Welcome on stage, Andre Mazu. Thank you. Hello. Um, I don't want to show you any uh, source code. It will be a story about uh, how I was trying to make a game, um, simple one, uh, but it took me four years. Uh, and I hope you will uh, see uh, what m mistakes I did and what could be improved. So maybe you will, uh, your game will take less than uh, four years. Um, I am known as uh, an HTML5 game developer. Um, I'm doing a lot of uh, projects f focusing, loosely focusing on uh, game development, um, including GameDevJS Weekly. Uh, do we have any subscribers of GameDevJS Weekly here? Okay, a few, awesome. Um, so, I will tell you a story uh, which started uh, four years ago at the On Game Start conference, um, which happened in Warsaw, uh, and was focusing on HTML5 games. And I was um, telling uh, a story about how to create games with uh, a strict limitation of 13 kilobytes, uh, which is kind of a challenge on its own. And at the conference, uh, I met um, Robert from Black Moon Design, who was designing the website for the conference uh, on all the stuff around the conference. And we decided that it would be cool to create a game together. Uh, he is a graphic designer and I'm a programmer. Uh, so I decided to start Enclave Games, uh, which is, uh, let's call it a company, but basically me doing freelance uh, and working on games, basically, more or less. Uh, so the story is about uh, Wizard Quest. Um, the game that you can already see doesn't look so complicated. It's, it looks like a classic match three game. Um, and after the conference ended in September, if I remember correctly, uh, I wrote a blog post um, on the 2nd of November that I hope the game will be ready uh, in November or December because I thought it's almost finished. And like uh, four years ago, <laughs> I said that I hate it, but it was the date when it was released. Um, so it's kind of less than four years, but still, I still hate it. Uh, so the, the concept behind this is uh, many new game developers uh, have no idea how hard making game is, games is. Uh, so they think about, well, maybe for a first project, let's create an MMORPG. Uh, let's create World of Warcraft, but better. Uh, so I also thought that game dev is easy, so um, the game I wanted to create, uh, it's not an MMORPG, uh, but still, uh, it has some features that uh, it's not like they will be implemented in one evening. Um, so the game has uh, a bestiary where you can see all the monsters that you can uh, defeat, um, see their, their stats. Uh, you have some very basic achievements. Uh, there is, of course, of course, a map uh, in which uh, you are uh, walking uh, on a path to uh, defeat some great evil. Of course, the, the last boss is the dragon, because why not? And basically, the gameplay is, is a match three game, right? So you just smash runes and attack monsters and try to survive, and basically that's it. Um, I can show you the game, or at least try to show you, because if you try to show something, it doesn't work, usually. Uh, so as, as you can see, you, you, can, you can see the monsters, you can see the achievements, it just works. And basically, if you start a fight with a wolf, because it's not that dangerous creature, you can just smash it. And yeah, basically, 
Yeah, it, it works. So. The problem was um, I decided that my first project have to be perfect, and every f everything in that project have to be perfect. Uh, the source code have to be beautiful. If a programmer will look at my source code, he will be so happy about it that he will tell all his friends about it. So <laughs> it has to be perfect. Um, the problem was um, when I started implementing the game, uh, there was f uh, different tools to choose from. I started with vanilla JS, uh, writing in pure JavaScript. Um, and the first version kind of worked. I was so happy. Uh, I thought that the game is almost finished while I had the um, main menu screen and the buttons didn't work. And you could only go and see the map, and that's it. Um, then I started using jQuery. Uh, it kind of even worked. I had the screen with, uh, with the monsters and the runes, but the, the gameplay wasn't there. Uh, then I saw the framework that's called Impact, which was really awesome. It was made to make games. Uh, so I tried twice. And after that, uh, the phaser came in. And I thought, well, it will be awesome to use a new framework for that. Uh, so I tried, like, six times, I think, um, because I thought that the my project have to be perfect. So if I couldn't change something, I thought that it will be cool to just start from scratch, uh, which isn't. So after months of struggling with the project, uh, I decided to just drop it completely and create something new, uh, which was way, way, way simpler. So the Captain Rogers game is a game where you avoid the asteroids. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so um, the thing is, um, I wanted to create something, anything, that could be finished and called a finished game. This one is. Uh, I, I quickly realized that you can, because the, the first version was having only the asteroids and that's it, uh, I saw the source code and decided that it's kind of easy to add bombs or some bonuses, so uh, they are in the game. Um, but uh, the idea was to strip everything, throw it away, and have something that is actually finished, and that, that, that you can tell the world that it works. And I already show you the game. Um, the games are online, you can play them. Um, so I, it was 2013, I think. Um, Firefox OS appeared. Uh, it was a um, mobile operating system written in JavaScript for mobile devices, and it kind of worked together, my game with uh, devices running Firefox OS. So surprisingly enough, um, it was more or less a success because uh, I made one game which was very simple, and I got invited to conferences to talk about how to make HTML5 games, <laughs> which was really cool. Um, but I decided to create a little bit more games, so it's games, not game, because I was saying how to make games. So I made like a few of them in the meantime. Um, so basically, the first thing to realize is that you suck. Because um, you have no idea how game dev is hard. And uh, your skill set, if you're just starting, is very poor. And um, you just have to realize that, and that's it. Uh, so you have to know that you don't know a lot of stuff. Uh, you have no idea how much creating a game will take. Uh, and uh, 
building a simple prototype can be enough to, to see that it's not so easy. If you try to implement some, uh, some features, it will take time. Uh, you have to have a plan. Uh, it's not that I will create a game and just see what happens. Uh, basically, uh, sticking to a plan um, will be very useful because uh, you won't get any distractions. Um, and when building items for, uh, for your plan, you have to have it um, very granular, very modular uh, stuff and very easy. So, for example, if your game is uh, like a wizard quest and you want to implement something, uh, you want to split it into uh, smaller pieces so you can, for example, uh, jump into the source code and uh, create something in one evening, like, for example, adding some small feature. Uh, so your prototype is growing, but uh, the first version uh, of it is, is already working. It's not like that like uh, you're trapped in the basement for two years and nobody will see the source code, nobody will see the game or the source code. And after two years, you're uh, leaving the cave and saying it's finished. Um, so it's really cool to uh, work on something that, it, that is already working and add some small features to it that will not break it, of course. Uh, so the iterating over the working build is very important. Um, there is a saying uh, about um, game designers who, or designers in general, uh, that they have uh, a beautiful image in their minds that want to paint it, but uh, the skills are so poor that uh, it totally does not resemble what they created. Um, and the thing is, if you try to uh, work on your skills uh, every day, uh, the image will get better and better. Uh, so it's really important to, you know, try uh, as often as possible and just uh, grow your skills. And the versioning is very important because um, if you have something that is already working, uh, in the worst case scenario, you can just ship it and call it version 1.0. And everything else that is um, on your to-do list uh, can end up in the second version. Uh, so you may work on that or don't have to. You can, uh, if the game will be a success, you can call it a DLC and uh, get money for that uh, or create a second version which will be a lot better from the first one because of all the features uh, that you will implement. But the most impor important thing is that uh, the first version will be finished and all the stuff uh, won't matter for the first version. Um, so you may or may not work um, on that. And the important thing is uh, feedback, feedback from people um, because uh, if you're working on the project alone, it's, it's really hard uh, to see the game from the bigger perspective. Um, for example, uh, I showed the game uh, to a few of my friends and basically um, they found things which were obvious to them, and when they showed it to me, it was also obvious to me, but I couldn't find it myself. For example, uh, in the first version of the Wizard Quest game, if you play it, uh, if you tap on the runes that won't make the chain and won't uh, give the damage to, to the monster, um, nothing will happen. So basically, you could just tap randomly, and see monsters dying. Uh, so the idea was to um, add uh, something that will give, that will um, damage uh, the player. And it was like one line of JavaScript uh, that changed that and the gameplay uh, improved uh, over the previous version. Uh, so it's really, really important uh, to ask for feedback. Uh, it's also important to uh, show what you are working on because um, there was a conference in March where um, we met with, with my friends and I said that my game is almost finished. 
Uh, so I talked about the game, and they were like, okay, one week later, is it finished already? Not yet. Like a month later, is it finished already? Not yet, but I felt the pressure that it had to be finished. And I thought it was almost, almost finished, uh, like two or three bucks left, but it was like more like 30. Uh, but still, um, the, the game was getting back with uh, bug reports, but uh, I kept working on it because I said it's almost ready. Um, so, oops, yes. Uh, so the important thing is to uh, set the deadlines. Uh, I set the deadline for March and finished the game in June, but still it's better to be like three months after the deadline than never. Um, and the important thing is, uh, it's really about focusing on the game, uh, focusing on the project. Um, it's, it's really hard, but uh, you have to ask yourself a question if you really want to finish that game. Uh, because if not, then you can just drop the project. And if you do, uh, there is no magic bullet. Uh, you just have to focus on that, uh, leave uh, all the other projects for later, uh, and just finish what you started. And you just have to get it done. Uh, so, to summarize the talk, uh, if I would like to have you to remember three things from the talk. Uh, first thing will be KISS, keep it simple. Um, expand on your uh, project, uh, have a prototype that works already, and do it step by step. The, th the second thing is KISS, and the third KISS. Um, yes, so um, tomorrow I will be running a workshop where instead of 1,460 1, days, uh, you can make a game in three hours. Uh, so if anyone is going, we'll meet you there. And that's it, thank you. If you have any questions, you can find me here, so. I know you got some, I know you got some.